The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to Midday Prayer on Monday, July 27th. This is part of our Church Beyond Our Doors outreach ministry here at St. George's, the Anglican Parish of the Blue Mountains. On our YouTube channel, the Anglican Parish of the Blue Mountains, you can find our Sunday and midday services, as well as some messy church episodes for the children. Today's service is a service of morning prayer for Mondays from Pray Without Ceasing, authorized by the General Synod of the Anglican Church of Canada. As we come together for worship, let us begin with a moment of silence. The Lord is glorious in his saints. O come, let us worship. Lord, open our lips, and our, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. O God, make speed to save us. O, o Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our invitatory psalm today is Psalm 24. Feel free to read along in your book of alternative services or your Bible. Psalm 24. The world and everything in it belongs to the Holy One. So too the fertile world and all who live therein. The Most High founded it on the ocean of chaos, fixed it firmly among the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of God? Who may stand in that holy place? Those with clean hands and pure hearts who have not given themselves to falsehood nor sworn deceitful oaths. They shall receive blessing from the Holy One and true justice from the saving, helping God. Such are they who look to you, who seek your presence, O God of Jacob. O you gates, lift up your heads. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the glorious majesty may come in. Who is this glorious majesty? It is the Holy One, great in power and might, the Holy One, mighty in battle. O you gates, lift up your heads. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the glorious majesty may enter in. Who is this glorious majesty? It is the Holy One, ruler of hosts, who is indeed the glorious monarch. proclamation of the word this morning begins with Psalm 121, which can be found on page 882 of the Book of Alternative Services. Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. And together we pray. Be present, Be present merciful God, God and, and protect, protect us, us in times, times of danger, so that we who are weary by the changes, changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our morning prayer continues with a reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 6 to 19. A reading from 1 Samuel. Saul heard that David and those who were with him had been located. Saul was sitting at Gibeh under the tamarisk tree in the, on the height with his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing around him. Saul said to his servants who stood around him, Hear now, you Benjaminites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why all of you have conspired against me? No one discloses to me when my son makes a league with the son of Jesse. None of you is sorry for me or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as he is doing today. 
Doeg, the Edomite, who was in charge of Saul's servants, answered, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitov. He inquired of the Lord for him, gave him provisions, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. The king sent for the priest Ahimelech, the son of Ahitov, and for all his father's house, the priest who, and the priests who were at Nob. And all of them came to the king. Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitov. He answered, Here I am, my lord. Saul said, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse? By giving him bread and a sword and by inquiring of God for him so that he has risen against me to lie in wait, as he is doing today. Then Ahimelech answered the king, Who among all your servants is as faithful as David? He is the king's son-in-law and is quick to do your bidding and is honored in your house. Is today the first time I have inquired of God for him? By no means. Do not let the king impute anything to his servant or to any member of my father's house. For your servant has known nothing of all of this, much or little. The king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. The king said to the guard who stood around him, Turn and king kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand is also with David. They knew that he fled and did not disclose it to me. But the servants of the king would not raise their hand to attack the priests of the Lord. Then the king said to Doeg, You, Doeg, turn and attack the priests. Doeg the Edomite turned and attacked the priests. On that day he killed 85 who wore the linen ephod. Nob, the city of the priests, he put to the sword. Men and women, children and infants, oxen, donkeys, and sheep, he put to the sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All right, now before we get lost in how horrific this part of King Saul's story is, remember that Saul was appointed to be king by the Lord. He wasn't always this crazed king turned murderer. Remember also that Saul is a Benjaminite. So when those around him refused to comply with his order to kill the priests, it was his own tribe, his family, refusing to do the bidding of their king. There is a certain amount to be said for submitting to those God has put in, in authority over us, but we must never do so without thought, without using the reason that God has given us. It's unlikely that most of us will be told to murder a bunch of priests for helping someone. But it is conceivable that we may be told to do things by those in authority that are against our faith. The most common would probably be lying. I've encountered this in the workplace when lying was the most expedient way to solve a problem. Those over me often did so with ease, even though I refused to. It would be wonderful if I could say that I have always refused to do what I was told to if it conflicted with my faith, but I can't. That would be a lie. It's sometimes very easy to just accept that that's the way things are done. But as people of God, we are called to different standards. Different standards from those who live around us. You'll notice that the Benjaminites did not riot or chant or uprise and overthrow the king. They simply didn't comply. It may well be that there's someone else standing right beside you ready to do what you're being told to, but it doesn't mean that we should disregard our faith and do what we know is wrong. We are called to live differently. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 15, verses 14 to 22. A reading from Romans. I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and are able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, on some points I have written to you rather boldly by way of reminder, because of the grace given to me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles, by word and by deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem, as far around as Ilicrum, I have fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. Thus, I make it my ambition to proclaim the good news, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have not heard of him shall understand. This is the reason that I have so often been hindered from coming to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. So here Paul is explaining why he hasn't been to visit the church in Rome, but has instead written to them boldly, holding them accountable for the knowledge they have received and for which they teach each other. Although he felt called to ensure that those in Rome weren't offering acceptable in God's sight, he was charged with taking the good news to Gentiles who had not yet heard it. He was not to stay among those who already knew Christ. Many of you are likely familiar with the phrase, bad company corrupts good character from 1 Corinthians. And we are told to guard our hearts and our minds. But here Paul is explaining that he must go to those who have not heard the good news of Christ, because it is to be proclaimed. Paul was called to the Gentiles. More specifically, he was called to those who did not know the one true God. Likewise, there are those today who are given the gift of evangelism by the power of the Spirit and are called to proclaim Christ to those who have not heard. And yes, there are those who have not heard. If someone called to spread the gospel stays among those who already believe, they are not allowing Christ to accomplish the will of God through them, not doing what the Lord has asked of them. Now, not everyone is given the gift of evangelism. But the Spirit does give each of us gifts. If we fail to acknowledge our spiritual gifts, or fail to use them as we're being led by the Lord, we're failing to bring God the offering that he has asked of each of us. Each of us needs to ask the Lord what spiritual gifts we've been given and how we're being asked to use them. We need to listen for an answer, and then we need to go as we've been sent. Today's canticle comes from Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 2 to 6. Behold, God is our salvation, in whom we will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is our strength and our song, and has become our salvation. With joy, with joy we shall draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day we shall say, we give thanks to you, O Lord, and call upon your name. We shall make known your deeds among the nations, proclaiming that your name is exalted. Let us sing the praises of the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, all that dwell in Zion, for, the, for great in our midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as was, it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. As Greta leads us in a prayer over our community, feel free to follow along with litany number one on page 110 of the Book of Alternative Services. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For 
peace from on high and for our salvation. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, Justice, Justin, our Prime Minister, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. From this town, from every city and community, and for those who live in, in them in faith, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For good weather and for abundant harvests, for all to share, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died and all who mourn, Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to become eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our college for the day, <clears throat> we read together. O oh God, God, the, the protector, protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us honor. your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your kingdom come. Your, your will, will be, be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our, our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining Greta and I today for morning prayer. Um, again, if you would like to find any other of our past videos, you can do so on our YouTube channel, the Anglican Parish of the Blue Mountains. Now, as we leave this place of worship, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.